This is a production of Florida State University. Coming up on FSU Headlines, Florida State University remembers a great Floridian, Sandy Dallenbert. Opening nights returns with a new season of outstanding performances. And legendary college baseball coach Mike Martin wraps up his final season. FSU Headlines starts now. Hello and welcome to another edition of FSU Headlines, coming to you from the beautiful campus of Florida State University here in Tallahassee. I'm your host, Dennis Schnitker. We begin today with a remembrance and a celebration of life. Florida State University President Emeritus Sandy Dallenbert passed away May 20th at the age of 85. Dallenbert served Florida State as university president from 1994 until 2003. He leaves a lasting legacy not only here on campus, but around the world as a result of his lifelong dedication to education, human rights, and the rule of law. FSU Headlines reporter Mark Vaughn takes a look back at the life and legacy of Talbot Sandy Dallenbert. Sandy Dallenbert was a man of principle, compassion, and joy. His legacy was forged through hard work and a desire to make a difference in the lives of others, especially students, faculty, and staff at Florida State University. First of all, he's a great man, great man. We'll miss him terribly. His friendship uh, meant, means so much to me, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm brokenhearted um, and saddened for our university, for our state, and really for our nation, because Sandy reached out and touched so many lives in so many different places with all the various things he did, uh, from being president of the Flor American Bar Association to uh, dean of our law school to the president of Florida State University, and to being just a real lawyer who was a voice for people who didn't have a voice in many ways. So he's, uh, he's a legend, he's a friend, and uh, he'll be sorely missed by all of us. He was known as a consummate Southern gentleman, and President Dallenberg could often be seen wearing his signature bow tie around campus at Florida State. That's where he served as its 12th president from 1994 to 2003. Before his time as president of FSU, he also served as the dean of the College of Law at Florida State from 1984 to 1989. And he remained a law professor for much of his career. As university president, Dallenberg brought funding and ultimately accreditation for the new College of Medicine, which welcomed its first class in 2001. He also completed the university's first major capital campaign and through it established the Center for the Advancement of Human Rights and many other academic improvements. He was president of the American Bar Association and that reached out beyond just the United States of America. Uh, he certainly had international activities he was involved in, certainly international legal activities he was involved in. He, um, he, he was a consummate, uh, you know, people talk about a lawyer's lawyer, he was, a, uh, he was definitely that and more, and, uh, and was recognized for so many accomplishments that, he, that he's done in, in the law. Uh, but the main one was his, his, his love of, of people who really did not have a strong voice, and he felt he could be that voice for them on so many occasions, and I saw it firsthand, and, uh, when he worked with, I worked with him in the legislature on a couple of issues, and uh, he made a difference. He made a difference in the lives of a lot of people, touched a lot of lives, and you know his legacy will be one of of uh, uh, lasting, lasting uh, at Florida State University uh, for a long, long time. During Dallenberg's tenure as president, Florida State University became a headquarters for the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory. The university also acquired the John and Mabel Ringling Museum of Art and established the Seven Days of Opening Nights Festival of the Fine and Performing Arts, known now as Opening Nights. In the late 1990s, President Dallenbert and President John Thrasher, then Speaker of the Florida House of Representatives, worked together to establish the College of Medicine at FSU. At that time, it had been more than 25 years since a new medical school had been established in the United States. Dallenberg's desire to help those in need is also what led him to establish FSU's Center for the Advancement of Human Rights, the nation's first of its kind. Over the past 19 years, lawyers, staff, and students at the center have helped untold victims of human trafficking, torture, and war crimes in more than 90 countries, as well as those seeking asylum. 
D'Alembert's career in public and professional service dates back more than 50 years when he served in the Florida House of Representatives, chaired the Florida Constitution Revision Commission, and completed a term as president of the American Bar Association. Florida State University President Emeritus Sandy D'Alembert will be missed, and he will be remembered for all his contributions to Florida State and to society as a whole. For FSU Headlines, I'm Mark Vaughn. President Emeritus D'Alembert remained active even through our most recent spring semester, teaching courses at FSU's College of Law. His absence will be felt throughout the Florida State campus and beyond. He was truly a great Floridian. We honor another great in our next headline. Each year, the Florida State faculty bestows the title of Robert O. Lawton Distinguished Professor upon one of its own to recognize academic excellence an outstanding achievement. This year's recipient has spent a career at Florida State as an accomplished chemistry professor and scientific pioneer. You might not expect to be averaged by this rotational motion. So I came out of a postdoc from UPenn and came down here um, and interviewed. I came into a, a very good uh, chemistry and biochemistry department. I got a telephone call from Jack Crow saying, uh, what about helping to write a grant proposal for the Magnet Lab? And uh, that really changed my life. This was the opportunity to showcase a national facility for doing NMR and MRI uh, research. And it has worked out that way. Um, it's, it's, been, it's become a, a tremendously good facility that is respected by researchers around the world. The tradition of Lawton professors at Florida State University are at the top of the, of the list of faculty members we've had in just about every aspect, uh, teaching, research, service, all of those things, and Tim Cross obviously uh, is well suited to be a Lawton professor. If you look at the long list of Lawton professors, you'll see extraordinary faculty members. We're really, really pleased that Tim has been chosen to join that great list. I honestly really did not think that, that I would be the one uh, chosen for the Lawton. Um, it, it's such a high award out of so many faculty on campus. I would love to see the Lawton that I've gotten reflect on the department, the university environment. I collaborate with three or four uh, faculty in different environment, uh, in different departments such as mathematics and chemistry and physics, um, and so, you know, that's to me, that's what this is all about. It's not about me; it, it's about the team. And Professor Cross will also have the honor of delivering a commencement address to the class of 2019 later this year. The FSU College of Medicine recently cut the ribbon on Tallahassee's newest home for primary care. Welcome from Florida State University. This is a great day for FSU and the College of Medicine. We're opening up a new premier health care building here in southwest Tallahassee. This is something we've been working on for a whole lot of years. We've always envisioned having a practice somewhere in Tallahassee, and this is just a great opportunity to finally do that. It's a 10,000 square foot building. At any given time, we might have you know five or six physicians and several PAs working here providing primary care. Really make it a one-stop shop for folks and really provide the kind of care that this community really deserves. We've been around for now 19 years. We're about to graduate our 15th class next Saturday, so we're really excited about this. This for us is really kind of the next step in our growth and development. As we build a practice, we really become a very tangible presence in this community. We've always had the mission of caring for the underserved, and this is a great way to show that. The 10,000 square foot facility has 17 exam rooms, two procedure rooms, a community room, and a conference room, plus a children's waiting room. A $1.7 million grant from NASA will give Florida State University climate experts and their collaborators the ability to provide critical data to water resource managers around the state. In partnership with a network of scientists, researchers from Florida State University will use the NASA grant to develop cutting-edge climate prediction tools that could benefit Florida water utilities. 
The new tools will provide improved insight into climate's effect on systems and operations essential to state water utilities. Here's FSU professor and researcher Vasu Misra talking about the project. NASA has sent out satellite missions to measure soil moisture across the globe. And so we uh, have proposed to use that information and ingest that information in our prediction tools to improve the seasonal forecast. Florida State University is embarking on a new initiative that has the potential to create one of the most diverse and robust talent pipelines in the nation. Florida State is already a national leader in student success and the university hopes to improve on that by continuing to enrich the student learning experience. FSU is adopting an experiential learning requirement for undergraduate students and it will make Florida State the largest and most diverse university in the country to have such a requirement. We wanted to figure out how can we enable every student, regardless of their family background or their income, to participate in experiential learning. That's a major challenge and a major question for, for public higher education in America broadly. And FSU is a, is a leader in, in, in thinking about how do we enable students to, to thrive regardless of, of, of their family background. And so we wanted to really lean into this problem, this challenge. Can public higher education in America provide experiential opportunities for every single student in a diverse public university like Florida State? Our answer to that question is yes, we can. And that's why our faculty decided last, uh, last spring that we will require experiential learning for our undergraduates. We will become, and now are, the largest and most diverse university in America to have an experiential learning requirement. And coming up next, it's time for the trip of a lifetime. It's going to be special. Uh, first time groups are actually going to be marching on the beach. Um, we reached out to them. They reached out to us. We all kind of found each other. and. Um, we're really excited that it could just all happen at just the perfect time. The world-renowned Florida State Marching Chiefs traveled to Europe upon request when FSU Headlines continues in a moment. State University. When you buy a Florida State University license plate, you're not just showing your school spirit, you're supporting students like us in the lab, in the classroom, and in the library. Putting this tag on your vehicle helps Florida State students achieve their dreams. So show your pride. Purchase an FSU license plate today. Welcome back to FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. If you've been to a football game here at Florida State University, then you've no doubt enjoyed the sights and sounds of the Florida State University Marching Band, known around here as the Marching Chiefs. This summer, the Chiefs traveled to France to participate in the 75th anniversary commemoration of World War II's D-Day invasion. June 6, 1944 was the beginning of the end of World War II in Europe, and 75 years later, Florida State was the only collegiate marching band representing the United States in France's official D-Day Memorial Parade. The marching chiefs were proud to pay tribute to the brave members of the greatest generation who helped win World War II by sacrificing so very much. It's going to be special. Uh, first time groups are actually going to be marching on the beach. Um, we reached out to them. They reached out to us. We all kind of found each other. and. Um, we're really excited that it could just all happen at just the perfect time. Just an unbelievable opportunity that I can't believe I get to be a part of, and I can't believe Chiefs as a whole gets to represent just not only the university, but the state, the United States. Like, that's just such a great opportunity. 
I think what it means a lot to me and my family is that my grandpa um, served in World War II and he's one of the last living vets. Um, and so my mom told me, she's like, you have to wear his pin, you know, and you get to represent him. And my mom started bawling and, you know, it just, it means something to my family, to the university, to the state of Florida and to the country. And so it's just, you know, again, it's serving others and it just means a lot to be allowed to do that. Not anybody can, can march in the marching chief. So there is a standard uh, that's set from our, you know, previous generations of marching chiefs. Uh, you know, we have a proud alumni base uh, that, uh, you know, that helped pave the way to where we are now. Uh, and that's something that, you know, we are uh, continually striving to not just uphold, but build upon. The week-long trip to Paris in the beaches of Normandy marks the third time that the band has performed overseas. Everyone here at Florida State University is certainly excited about the new lineup of star performers coming our way for Opening Nights. That's the name of the university's performing arts series that originally began back in 1921. It's now evolved into a nearly year-long showcase of everything from music to the fine arts. We spoke with director Michael Blatchley about the upcoming season and what we can all expect. We have a couple of headliners coming in that I think members of our community are really going to be excited about based on the time that I've been here. One of which is the Beach Boys, who are iconic and created really the surf sound that we all know today as one of the thriving entertainment facets. Equally, a group that opened for the western part of our country in the very first tour of the Beatles, and that's the Righteous Brothers. And the two of them together represent sort of two anchors of American pop music that came as a result of the rockabilly and the beach music leading into it and country western rolling out of that. And you can see this year's entire lineup and learn more online at openingnights.fsu.edu. In our next headline, Florida State University's student move-out program, Chuck It for Charity, proves there's a second life for unwanted items, helping local charities along the way. Watch this. Welcome to our Chuck It for Charity warehouse. Chuck It for Charity is our student move-out program where we collect all the items that students leave behind during their finals week move-out time. We collect it all, we weigh it and store it for one week. Can we just create a spot out there? Is that the plan? and this week we give everything that we've collected over to about 25 different community organizations and so they're all here gathering items that they need to support their work and the people that they help. Any type of cleaning products, rooms, anything I can help the homeless shelter with. We can't do it without organizations like this and make it happen. There are many people who are going to be benefited from this day's activities when we take this out particularly devastated communities like uh, in Panama City that still recover. Look for some small limbs, man. I think I got four. The maximum is five, so you know you can't be for sure. Hey, this is my first time here. I'm having a blast. I think this is great. We get to serve a very wide variety of issues and people and organizations. We get lots of um, thank yous and blessings, and so that's really, that's really helpful in the heavy lifting week that we do. So we've worked with a lot of these organizations for 10 years, and it's nice to see them return every year. They know the system, they know how it works, um, and you know it's almost like seeing old friends every year. FSU has been a significant contributor. It's like Christmas coming early. Coming up next on FSU Headlines, we head to the baseball diamond as Mike Martin coaches in his final postseason. We'll have that story and much more from FSU Athletics when FSU Headlines continues in a moment. Welcome back to FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. Florida State University's 2018 National Champion Softball team entered the 2019 postseason as a strong contender to return to the Women's College World Series and reclaim its title. FSU Headlines reporter Mark Vaughn joins us now to recap the team's postseason run and tell us about other FSU athletics as we head into summer. Mark? Hey Dennis, well as you've mentioned, the softball team came into this season with high expectations of a return trip to the Women's College World Series. Unfortunately for this team, though, they came up just one win short of that trip. 
The FSU softball team ran through the ACC tournament and then swept through their Tallahassee Regional, setting up a matchup with visiting Oklahoma State in the Super Regional here at Joanne Graff Field at FSU. After a close loss in game one that saw the Super Regional head to an elimination situation, the Knolls rallied for a game two win and forced a winner take all game three matchup. Despite some great pitching by senior Megan King and some great defense and also a home run by Anna Shellnut in the bottom of the seventh, it just wasn't enough as the Cowgirls left Tallahassee with a 3-2 win onto the Women's College World Series, ending the Seminole season. Sophomore Sydney Sherrill and Megan King were both named to the All-American teams for this season. The Knowles ended the year with an impressive 55-10 record. Over to the baseball diamond and the final season in the Mike Martin era at Florida State University. The team had a somewhat up and down regular season heading into the ACC tournament. One loss and a big win over NC State in the ACC tournament put the Knowles back into the regionals. It's a place Coach Mike Martin and crew are used to, and it showed. The Knowles sweeping through the Athens Regional as a number three seed, picking up wins over FAU and then two blowouts over Georgia, the home team. They move into the Super Regionals with those wins. It's a feat number 11 was certainly proud of after a career like his, and he certainly should be. Number 11, as he's affectionately known, has had a career unlike anyone else. He is the winningest coach in NCAA baseball history, and he's had a legendary run. Here's a story from Seminole Sports about Mike Martin. It was the only sport that I, I truly loved growing up. I, I would always have a ball in my hand, throwing it off the house or throwing it off the front step. All of a sudden, I got an opportunity to come out here to my alma mater and the rest is history. Here's the pitch, fastball, high and deep to left. Back goes Bobby Brown, he's at the track. This ball is gone! The Seminoles win! Seminoles win! Oh my goodness! That ball is hit in the air! It is up! It is deep! It is gone! And the Seminoles win! The Rockets home run! For over 40 years, there's been one name that's been synonymous with Florida State baseball. And that's head coach Mike Martin. I've had a love affair with Florida State University since 1964 when I came down here with Carol. We just fell in love with this area, the people, and we've never really wanted to leave. We never have really left. Mike Martin took his love for the game and ran with it. Fast forward to a Hall of Fame induction, 16 College World Series appearances, eight ACC championship titles, and let's not forget over 2,000 wins. Just how does he do it? I had never been around a person that's more competitive than Mike Martin. He wants to take his nine and beat your nine. And he can take your nine and beat his nine. That's how competitive he is. And so from the first pitch to the last pitch, I never saw him ever waver from the goal of winning the baseball game. He's really direct to the point. Uh, he gets the best out of us and he uh, wants us all to succeed and he puts us before him. Much better. He brings it every day, you know, even when he's not feeling well or whatever, the consistency, you know what you're gonna get. There's no bipolar stuff going on here. You know what you're gonna get. And I think that's why the program has been successful. Many memories were made on the field that now bears his name. Through blood, sweat, and tears, one victory can make all that effort worthwhile. The Knolls are headed back World Series my freshman year, you know, coming here, then having the opportunity to go as far as you possibly can go in college baseball it was just an honor, and being part of the team to do it with him has just been a great experience overall. We going back! There's nothing better when he slams his hand on that table. And the kids have seen the video from years past 
and he slams his hand on that table and says, fellas, we're going back. And it's not a better words to hear yeah, from Mike Martin's mouth. That started actually when I was playing. That's when that started was in the mid 90s. And um, you know, every year that's kind of been the thing. And the guys are waiting for it. And you know, everybody knows and, uh, that it's going to happen. So it's pretty neat. He gets really excited. We all get excited. And those are the favorite moments when we're going to Omaha. Although a legendary coach, 11 did more than just win. He touched the lives of his players, coaches, and staff. You know, he's always been a player's guy. He cares about the whole person. He wants everybody right mentally, socially, physically, spiritually. He's a great person. My, I said this before, I said, my dad taught me how to be a man. Mike Martin taught me how to be a gentleman and also work hard at it. After 40 seasons with Florida State, Mike Martin will be passing the torch to the next head coach. And as many have said, the Seminole family will miss that Carolina draw those shaded specks, and the infectious smile that makes the ballpark feel like home. The message I would leave the next coach is be yourself. Just, just be yourself. Appreciate what you have. This, this program is, is special. Give it your best shot. Do the right thing. I'm Morgan Duell for Seminole Sports Magazine. All right, that's going to do it for sports. But remember, you can keep up with all things Seminole athletics by visiting Seminoles.com. Dennis, back to you. All right, thank you, Mark. And that is going to do it for this edition of FSU Headlines. But you can keep up with Florida State anytime on the university's official news website, news.fsu.edu. For everyone here at Florida State University, I'm Dennis Schnitker. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.